Hi guys, continuing our lecture series on VHDL, today we will look at the architecture in a little more detail. In the first lecture we had discussed the architecture just as an introduction. Today I will spend a little more time discussing the architecture. In the previous lecture we understood the concept of entity and we saw the different modes as input and output. Now let's look at the architecture in a little more detail. So as part of today's lecture, I will spend some time on the different styles of architectural modeling, which we saw in the first lecture, which were data flow, behavioral, and structural. We'll just spend a few minutes looking at each of these in a little more detail with an example. We did see an example in the first lecture, but as I said, that as a part of this entire lecture series, we will consistently see lots of examples. We will spend a complete lecture on the structural style, and we'll spend considerable time on the behavioral as well. So moving on. The architecture of a VHDL code or design, it, the major function of it is to specify the behavior of how my design will work or what my design will do. Also how the outputs will vary with respect to my inputs, obviously the output is the function of the input. So the architecture typically specifies all these three points, that is the behavior, function, and relationship. We know that the syntax is architecture keyword, the architecture name, which is specified by you. The entity name must be the same as the entity of your design then we will have some declarations here like signals and variables which we will see in a future lecture and then we have some concurrent statements concurrent is that execute at the same time they are all concurrent so they execute at the same time and we have the end keyword which ends with the architecture name specified by you so a few rules the architecture can contain only concurrent statements in a future lecture we will discuss sequential statements something that goes one after the other sequentially but they have to be written in a special style which we will discuss in a future lecture but Fundamentally, your architecture can contain only concurrent statements. The sequential statements will be written in a special style so that then they can execute as one process. And again, as I said, that will be a few lectures down the line. Now, the architecture can be specified using various levels of abstraction. What do I mean by various levels of abstraction is you can decide to sh show or specify the architecture at a gate level. If you have lots of gates connected to each other, you can describe it at gate level or you can decide to describe it in terms of a behavior that if you know how this complete circuit with function in terms of input and output, you can specify it in terms of behavior. So you can decide at what level at what level of detail you would like to specify whether it's at the behavioral level or at the gate level. It helps you design faster. It will give you a better understanding of how your design is if you define your levels of abstraction and obviously lesser complexity because the clearer you are with your design, the easier it is for you to design and hence it is easier for you to implement. 
Now a few more rules. One entity can have more than one architecture as I said in the first lecture you can have one entity which has multiple architectures but you cannot have an architecture without an entity means you cannot tell the circuit what it's going to do without you knowing what are the inputs and outputs so the different types of specifying the architecture body or what goes inside the architecture first is data flow in the data flow style of modeling you would use concurrent signal assignment statements that is if I have to specify an AND gate I would just write C is assigns A and B so A and B is assigned to C if you want to make multiple gates then you can say C is assigned A and B you would say X is assigned Y or Z so all of these statements will execute concurrently or in parallel so this is the data flow style of modeling where you specify how the data is flowing and from where so how and from where the behavioral style is a little more higher level reason being let's look at the same example of an AND gate for the time being just ignore these keywords of process and end process and begin let's just try and understand this part I will explain these terms of process in a future lecture so if A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1 then my C should be 1 else my C should be 0 so basically what I'm trying to say I have a circuit which says that if A is 1 and B is 1 then my output C should be 1 else in any other condition for example if A is 0 and B is 1 then my output is 0 or A is 0, B is 0, output is 0 or A is 1, B is 0, output is 0 which in effect is what? It is an AND gate but let's compare it to the previous situation all I wrote here was C is assigned A and B which was quite straightforward well here you actually specified the behavior of your AND gate yes it is a very long program for an AND gate but as you see that when I will have to specify more complex digital circuits like multiplexers then the behavioral style really helps me to model it correctly here we do not need to focus on gate level implementation you don't really care about what the gate level implementation would be here you know it's an AND gate but when you make larger circuits when you are designing larger circuits you do not worry about what my gate level will be well then the question in your mind is if I don't worry about the gate level then who will that's a very logical question that comes to your mind the answer to that question is when you write your VHDL program you put it through something called as a compiler a compiler is somebody who understands this VHDL language and then gives it to somebody called as a synthesis tool basically what this synthesis tool does is it looks at my VHDL code and says okay this is what you're trying to say I am going to make an AND gate for you so it is this synthesis tool who is a really smart person well I'm just saying it's a person but it's actually a software which understands based on your VHDL design what you are trying to say so 
the synthesis tool actually takes care of converting your behavior or your high level description up to gate level. I hope that was clear. And your structural style, if you have designed, let's say, a half adder and you want to use a couple of half adders to design a full adder. So I would design one half adder which would have inputs X, Y and output Z for sum and M for carry. Then I would call the half adder two times here and here such that X, Y, Z, M x y z m and i map the first x and y to a and b i map the second x to z of the first full adder i map the y to the carry in i map the output m which was actually the carry of your half adder to your or gate and then i or the two carries if I do this kind of design, then basically what I'm saying is I'm taking the structure of my design and putting it together. Basically, I'm just using some glue. So I'm taking these pieces, putting it together with some additional gates in between. Now the question is, I can choose to also make an OR gate and structurally use it here and then it would be a completely structural style. We will see a detailed example actually we'll see the same example of taking a full adder by making it using two half adders and we'll see an example and a practical lab example. So I hope that the concept of structural was clear just the concept we will see a practical example soon you can use a structural design to split a design into manageable units so you can make small designs combine them into one larger design and then use this larger design to make one very big design so this helps you manage your VHDL design into smaller parts Another very important point that I would like to raise here is that a lot of the manufacturers of FPGAs which we will be using as part of this course, they give you some predefined blocks. So let's say for example if you want to make a register which is a storage element you could write that in VHDL but again it's a very common thing it's a common known thing so the FPGA the vendor basically vendor is the seller the person who sells you the software already has the VHDL code for a register you just need to call it in your in your design so let's say if this is your design then all you need to do is call the register VHDL code and you use it as a component and thus you will use the structural style of design and you know save some time. So there are advantages to the structural style but to be very clear in your design that you will make as future designers you will use structural, behavioral, data flow, combine all of them and this will be your design. So there is no one particular style which is better than the other. They are all 
good in themselves and it's your job to understand which combination is best for you so that said I hope that uh, I was clear about the different styles of modeling in the next lecture we will see the different styles of modeling concurrent statements so see you next lecture thank you